I cannot handle making a bound buttonhole or anything because uh, I don't want to cut into the front of my garment and have all this raw stuff. And so this method of making a welt pocket is like my organdy patch method of making a bound buttonhole. And I've actually found an article in Threads Magazine telling you how to do it. And um, it's just basic, simple thing. When you make a uh, welt pocket, you trace the pocket. And you can have a pattern or not have a pattern, but you trace the shape of the pocket. And I like this interfacing because it was white and this would show up. That was my downfall. So anyway, you trace your pocket, center line, all the lines very carefully. And then what you want to do is put a pin in each corner and cut a piece of silk organza that is bigger than the space around your buttonhole or your welt pocket. And I basted this on, you could just use pins, but I didn't want to have pins fallen out around. So then you very carefully stitch exactly on your trace lines. Never ever start at a corner, start in the middle of one of the sides. And you stitch and pivot at each corner around the pocket. So that's number one. Then number two, you Clip down, oh, and there's a red dot on there. You want to go about a half an inch in on your line, your center line. You put a dot about a quarter, half an inch in. That gives you the length of triangle that gives you something to uh, hold on to. That's why I like the organdy patch method of bound buttonholes and things. It gives you something more to hold on to than these tiny little seam allowances. And then I'm not raveling my fabric. So anyway, you go ahead and you cut your pocket down the line, leaving your triangle. Then you turn your or organdy to the inside and press. And you have a very nice faced opening. Okay, this article I am not a glue person. This article suggests that you glue the lips of the buttonhole to the back of the opening. I don't believe in glue. It doesn't, I, I don't want it to stay in my garment. So I always baste. Now, the other thing that I do is I like, you have your lips of your buttonhole I like to take basting stitch down my center and then press it open to create the, the lips for the buttonhole or the welt pocket. And that keeps the edges together without me having to worry about it. I would then lay behind that faced opening this uh, unit of the lips of the, butt, of the, the pocket and center it and then I baste by hand along here. Then I take one side out and fold it back and what you want to do, and I stitched in different colors so you could see. The first one is green for the original stitching. The second one I did is red. So you want to stitch the lips of your pocket to these uh, edges that you've cut from the uh, buttonhole opening. And you want to stitch off the ends on both sides. So that's the first step. Then the second step is to take the pocket lining. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put your pocket behind the stitching and you're going to stitch again. Turn the pocket over and keep everything out of the way and stitch again. Now 
you fold it back, you have your little point sticking out and you stitch from the top of your pocket to the ends. One thing you probably never want to have is a square corner on the pocket. You probably want to have a little rounded one because they collect lint if they're square. <laughs> so it's easier if it's got a little <coughs> curve to it. So anyway, that's a basic welt pocket. Now this one, I have whip stitched the uh, lips together, but it takes the fear out of slashing into the front of my garment if I have a faced opening. I know that it won't ravel past those stitches. So that's why I like doing the faced opening. Now how to reshape a welt pocket so that you don't end up with all kinds of bulb collar things. What you do is you take your pattern for the welt. I, I don't know if you have a pattern or if you're gonna make one up. If you make one up, it doesn't matter. All you do is from the picture you'll see, you trace the welt onto a piece of paper with no seam allowances. You measure in on one of the long edges three quarters of an inch from each end. From the fold line to that dot, you draw a diagonal lang line. You then can take the piece of paper, cut it off, and you can pivot it down. So then you get the idea of how to add it to the bottom edge. Okay, then you just, or you can just take three quarters of an inch out to the side and connect the fold line to that line. That, what in essence it does, is it moves the bulk from the edge of the pocket at an angle, like you would do if you were mitering a corner or something. So then what you do is you add a quarter of an inch seam allowance back to all the edges and cut out your fabric. You put the interfacing on the long piece that will then, and not in your seam allowances, but it would be the front, your public side of your garment. That's where you put the interfacing. So this piece, the interfacing does not go all the way to the edge. And the picture at the bottom, I drew slash lines. So then you cut out your fabric and you'll sew your seam allowances. Press them open on your point presser and turn them right side out. I'm going to pass this around, but I need it back pretty quick. So you can feel the difference. This one has the seam allowances on the edges, and the other one has the seam allowances on, um, toward the center, I guess is what you'd call it. But you can feel the difference. Okay, I taught you how to do the basic, which is very, very simple. Okay, if you have a faced opening, the possibilities just open up all the things that you can do. So I've been out on Pinterest and I found all kinds of fun pictures. Here is just a simple welt pocket that has an extra welt added for color. You do everything exactly the same. Now you would need it to be relatively thin fabric because this is a lot of bulk to add. But anyway, it's a very attractive, simple thing to do for a pocket. Here's another one that's so cool. It's a plain pocket and when it comes back I'll show you kind of how to do this. It's the plain pocket that we did to begin with but it's got a little flap added with a button. Here's one where it has just one lip and the little flap where the button is. Sometimes you see these on the back of men's pants. Mm -hmm. If you were gonna do a pocket like this, you've gotta think, this possibly could show pocket lining. So the pocket back should probably be fashion fabric. 
the pocket bag back should probably be the fashion fabric but it's just a simple thing that's so easy to do mind you this is a faced opening you've made in your fabric make it a fun shape it works the same way the bottom pocket is a little harder to sew on but I would if I was making this pocket I would make my pocket or my opening with the lips in it and then I would lay the fabric for the pocket on here to create my pattern because it would require sewing and then flipping you know like a pivot to make the pocket lay flat but it's a faced opening you can do anything you want here is a couple other things on the pocket with a flap with a button the plain pocket with a little decorative end here's one with a shape and of course like I keep saying it's a faced opening you could do anything here's an origami pocket so you could put anything you wanted, any shape. I also saw one that was a triangle, like a big triangular bound buttonhole. And uh, my printer wouldn't work. Now this one, I'm pretty sure is a flap pocket where the flap would be sewed on. It's not a true welt, but it could be a welt. It's like a double pocket uh, flap. Anyway, I thought it was really attractive, mm -hmm. but like I said, it this picture, just from looking at it, I'm pretty sure that it's a flap rather than an actual welt. Okay, now, if your pocket has <laughs> one welt that like sticks up or sticks down, what you do is you would do the pocket exactly the same way. You see this flap fits inside this opening instead of laying the uh, fabric right here behind here when you lay the fabric in you would lay it in the pocket this way and these would then be whipped down by hand that's normally how a welt pocket is made conversely the same thing happens if it faces up it's the same thing. So, now, there are things you can do. If you have the basic opening, you can do things like, you could stick a piece of trim, like that blue pocket with the extra color, but you could put a little trim in the welt when you stitch it, just to create a little interest. The other thing you can do is in between the welt, when you put the welt in, you would add that to the seam. Okay. Um, you could do that. Or this is, like Carol Lee was talking about, you make a triangle and what you do to make the triangle is this one is kind of bulky because this is a piece of wool that's thick but you take and you fold it in half so you have long diagonal and then you fold the two sides in to create this point then i cut off the top so what you can do for the one we were sh we were showing with the the button and the two lips, add that little triangle in between when you put the lips in the buttonhole or in the welt pocket. And uh, then you would sew, you do the back the same way every time. But you can do so many things with the opening. The yeah, buttonhole <laughs> is so easy when it's a faced opening. So, well, one of the pictures I showed you is, 
these guys are giving me some grief moving around. Take a little piece of leather or something and make a triangle to the end of your pocket. And it also would reinforce the pocket. So anyway, but there are so many possibilities for a buttonhole once you think of it as a faced opening. You know, because we all get concerned that it's, oh, it's a big welt pocket. But, you know, welt pocket is just a faced opening. If you have a faced opening, you can do anything. <laughs>